Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today, oh boy, we are going to be really compacting some things. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, hopping in today is going to be a little bit interesting. Um, this setup that we have over here, I mean, I'll admit, it is not, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. I, I mean, nor is this. This is honestly worse. And today, we're gonna fix that problem, or at least try my best to fix that problem. How am I gonna do that? You might ask, well, it's gonna be a complex, algorithmic, I'm just kidding, it's 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 really just compact machines. And uh, the nice thing is, is the crafting recipe for these aren't bad at all. You don't even need to use the fill projector like you used to. And I think maybe the reason is, is because it's just not updated yet or fully complete. Uh, hopefully it works. That's uh, that's a big thing. I, I hope this mod actually works. Otherwise, that'll be uh, another thing in itself. Let me go ahead and grab some leather. By the way, this mob farm has been working fantastic. Um, and it's only one of them. Also, I eventually want to get our power in a compact machine. Um, this is going to go in a compact machine. Like, all of this stuff that, that actually caused lag, like, this definitely causes some lag. Uh, FPS lag because of the... Uh, the up and down and constant change of the crucibles like th that all needs to go in into one of these now on servers be be kind to server owners uh compact machines well where they're they seem like a good idea they really become a big headache for server owners um i do love the mod and this is nothing against the mod but as a server owner myself i do know that these become a huge pain because it's really hard to moderate what is inside these. There is a command that is really nice that lets you kind of peek inside or used to, um, but it's really hard to jump between these. <laughs> so, uh, in, in, fi in finding where lag and, and issues are at. So this mod, uh, be, you know, maybe use one of them, uh, but don't put a lot of crazy stuff in them. If you're playing single player, do whatever you want. That's perfectly fine, but be nice to server owners, man. Um, otherwise you'll have nothing to play on, right? Uh, so let's take a look at this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a look and take a stab at this one. Uh, the gold, I want to see how big the gold is. I don't want a huge room. I really don't. Um, so let's take a look at this. Uh, we're going to need just a few of those. Um, I'm working towards getting that leather, right? Uh, let's see. Zombie flesh. I did throw that in here, didn't I? What did I do with the zombie flesh? Didn't I just grab some zombie flesh? Where did I? Oh, I put it in my inventory. Wow, it was literally in my hot bar. <laughs> so I just need a little bit of leather uh, to be able to make that book. Um, but this mod is kind of kind of interesting, and we have all the resources to be able to put this in the box, right? Put this in a, a small box, and still be able to access all of our resources from it. That is that is a cool thing to be able to do. Um, so let's check this thing out. I, I do need to make a personal shrinking device. That's how we're going to get in and out of this thing. It is a must. So definitely have one. Uh, let's go ahead and place this down for right now. And shrink. Okay, so this is the size of a gold one. It's not incredibly large. Um, I think this one would probably be big enough to support our sieving system. Definitely big enough, I think, to support the sieving system. Um, but also the storage drawers i mean we could probably fit them in here it would be very tight though to fit also the storage drawers in here so yeah probably probably not uh to get out by the way yeah you just kind of click out so what i'm thinking to be able to put both of those in one central unit um let's go ahead and get another compact machine and let's just go up to the obsidian level i think that one is going to be big enough yeah, it's a little bit taller. It's still about the same here. This this actually will work. This will definitely work. Um, now, you can do item tunnels in and out. I'm not going to be messing with any of that, even though it is really useful. Um, you can use redstone and control it from the outside uh, by piping items into this block, and it will actually interact with the things inside. Same goes for redstone. Um, but I didn't see power. I only see item tunnels and redstone tunnels in. So... Maybe, you know, that, that will eventually be added in the future, maybe. I don't know. Um, but having power interactivity would be nice. We're going to use Flux Networks because, you know, that, that is going to work for us. Um, now, I do need to 
tear this all down and rebuild this. So that is going to be a task. Now, the way this is set up, it works perfect. There is no reason for me to really change the style or design of this. It's it's just going to work inside here. Um, and it's going to be hidden. So this is going to disappear. So I'm going to tear this down and then we're going to start building it inside this compact machine. Now, the good thing is, is I can pick up this compact machine and I can move it and it's still the same compact machine. Let me demonstrate here. Um, Let's see, I guess I can toss an item in here, move out, break this block. We should be able to place it back down. Did my magnet pick that back up? I think it did. Let's get a block. That's better gonna that's gonna be a little bit better at showing this. Um we can open and go in here. Oh, you can see I just picked up the uh the item. So leave, pick it up, I can move it wherever I want. It's still linked to this ID, the machine ID too. So when I go inside, the block is still in here. Um, so we can we can still move these wherever we want. That's going to be so nice. And to get it off of our island and not have this massive contraption. Okay, let's let's do this. I need to stop talking. So let's take a look inside here. I now have pretty much the same thing that we had set up now. Um, and you can see everything's running. Actually, it's a bit cleaner now that I have everything going directly on top of one another. Um, and I probably could have pushed these closer together, but I do want to keep them kind of separated because of the pipes here. Um, it's being powered from our base, which is chunk loaded because it is our spawn. And, uh, technically you could go into the configs and turn on chunk loading here if you want. Um, I don't know if there is a, like a special chunk loader. Um, but these do allow for that. I just, I, I need to go in and turn it on. Um, I think this even allows chunk loading. Um, so if you have your, your chunks claimed, you can shift click to force load. Of course, I don't want to do that here because it's already force loaded. This area should say chunk loaded so long as the chunk that this block is in is loaded. Um, so if it's in a loaded chunk, it's going to stay loaded. Um, so that's kind of a nice little feature of this. Now, um, we basically need to let this kind of run its course. And while it's doing that, before I put the uh, sieves, the meshes in and we get everything hooked up, I need to, to transfer the storage drawers over here. And also with the storage drawers, we need to figure out how we're going to connect our storage drawer to a refined storage network like we have set up now. That is actually gonna be kind of an interesting thing um, because I get to go over how you can actually transfer and go cross dimensionally with refined storage which is always a nice little fun topic. So I have my entire storage wrapped up in here and noticed my drawer controller is setting up a little higher. And that's because inside here, we're gonna have to transfer our item pipes and we need to run it along here, but I also need to be able to access this drawer controller with my refined storage system. So I still need another face. Uh, there is, however, a drawer controller slave, I do believe, which allows you to have a drawer controller and then have another block down here that will allow more sides to be accessible. But the problem I'm running into is just the fact that I, I can't break these walls, right? So we have to work from within our means and that's gonna be the best way to do that. So let's talk about our pipes. Let's go ahead and get these all hooked up. Um, good thing is, is we still have our upgrades. Also, if you shift right click on your personal device, make sure you do that before you start putting things in the middle. Um, shift click to set a spawn point that's not where uh, your cables and stuff are at, because you don't want to spawn in your cables and suffocate and die. You know, that wouldn't be uh, so nice. I wonder if I can, ooh, I can remove these. Nice, I was hoping I could do that. Um, let's set all of these to extract mode. And then we're going to put our little upgrades in, and that seemed to do the job. Like, it seemed to work whenever we had these upgrades in here. So I'm going to continue just using these upgrades. It didn't get backed up or anything. The only thing that would happen is this would back up. Um, so we gotta make sure and check every now and then and make sure, um, I do wanna get void upgrades put on everything that we have here, just in case we start to go overboard. And then we can just let it run and we don't have to worry about it. Um, having void upgrades, I do have it on some things, like this for example, has a void upgrade in it um, and things like that. Just we don't want items spilling all over the place. So to get our system or our refined storage system to connect to that, um, we are gonna need not power because luckily when we transfer over, it actually carries the power over 
um, from our central source, which is really nice. But uh, we are going to need a network receiver and transmitter. Uh, this is going to require netherite, which uh, is you should have netherite at this point. It is so common. Uh, but a network transmitter and receiver. Okay. Transmitter is going to stay here. Receiver is going to go somewhere else. That kind of uh, the, the name transmit sends receiver receives. So hopefully that uh, kind of helps you understand it a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, we're also going to need a network card. Network card is going to be what we use to link these two together. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, we just need to place them and then get our system hooked in. Um, so down here, all I need is this right here. And then I can go ahead and actually grab the rest of these cables because we no longer need them. We'll fix this later on. Uh, yeah, we don't really need those cables anymore. But what I can do is right here, I can go ahead and plop in the transmitter. That's going to set there. And you can see this is actually, this needs a card. Um, well, we're not going to really worry about that. We are going to uh, just go ahead and head up there. I think we have everything we need. We pop in here. And then I'm going to hook my external storage to this. And then I'm just going to place my receiver right next to it. Just like that. And then uh, shift right click it with this card. Go back here. Pop down. And then we're going to place it inside here. And that should link to that one. And uh, what we should see is all of our ore again. Uh, we should definitely see that. Hopefully that's the case. I'm not actually, I'm not seeing this stuff. Let's try this again. We're in here. This now has power. Uh, external storage. Make sure that we can see everything. Extract. I want that to be set to insert and extract. Okay, that's correct. Priority one. And zero out. You know what? I wonder if this can't read from the face. Let me try. You know what? I don't think it can read from the face. Interesting. So you know what? Let's try this. This might actually work. And I think it'll look a little bit cleaner. <laughs> so we place this here. Of course, we need to remove. We need to move this. Now, we do have to relink that. Want to make sure the priority is set to one and insert and extract is on. Let's head back, grab our card out of here, our network card. Head back inside here. Shift click to turn that on. And like I said, this should stay chunk loaded. I'm, I'm hoping that it stays chunk loaded. That should be the case. Put the card in there. It says it's linked. Okay, everything is on. That's working. Can we see the stuff now? Uh, no. Um, interesting. Do I need to use FTB to chunk load it? We're about to find out. Uh, for some reason, it's not showing. Is it showing here that it's linked? 0% full. not updating or anything which is kind of weird um let me think I'm trying to think and uh see if i can figure this out maybe let's see if this is uh this is chunk loaded let's let's make this chunk loaded for, for a second we'll go into our chunks we'll claim it and then hold shift to force load it and then we'll back out and let's see if that fixes it No, that's not fixing it either. Aha, uh -huh. I found out why. It only wants to read from the bottom, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I can still insert from the top. This uh, is still inserting from the top, which is working. So I did have to arrange this a little bit differently than I would have hoped, but this does, it has to be on the bottom, apparently, of the controller, because now it's actually reading how many items are in here. Uh, and I have an accurate reading, which should mean Let's let's test this out. I, I shouldn't have to chunk load this. So actually it I yeah, I shouldn't have to chunk load it. So let's unclaim it. And let's test this. Let's go back and let's see 
Yes, we can see it. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't have to be chunk loaded. I mean, technically it should be loaded already, and even if not, the grid itself would keep it loaded. Um, but yeah, everything is set up now, back the way we had it. Everything's set up and voided, and it's all inside of this compact machine. Isn't that crazy? That's, that's crazy. Like, all of that setup that was down here, it's in this tiny block. Like, come on now. That's kind of cool. So at this point, it's probably time for, for us to also move our power generation. I find this to be one of the laggier things that is on our island. And I should be able to fit everything inside of this gold compact machine. It's not very big, but I think we should be able to get close to 14 dynamo set up with 14 fired crucibles all running and producing quite a bit of power. And of course, the upgrade ability later on down the road is going to be there. Um, but just getting the getting the base set up, getting it just set up uh, to run should work just fine. And um, we may have to upgrade. I think I'm going to use the same stuff that's under these for right now. I don't know. We'll we'll find out once we get it started uh, and get it, get it nice and set up because I don't have a lot of steel. I don't think I have enough for 14 blocks of superheating elements that's underneath this thing. But uh, the 20 is is still not bad. So let's go ahead and uh, and get these dynamos made. There's a there's a lot. I have uh, what one, two, three, four, five already made. So I need to get 14 of them total. So setting this system up shouldn't be horribly crazy. Um, we should be able to place our uranium blocks along the back wall. Um, I'm actually going to do one like this. In the center, we can line this up because I think on each side, I'm going to have at least one superheating element and at least one of the crucibles on that superheating element. As you can see right here, our floor is going to change a little bit. Um, I might need, let's see, one, two, three, uh, be five. Yeah, it should be seven and 14. So we did need 14, but I do have the two. Okay, so magmatic dynamos. We're going to connect our fluid pipes just like this and these are all going to connect into our dynamos um and i do have some dynamos that are different than others just like that and then i'm going to do one on this side one on the other and i should probably level these out a little bit um these are some of the faster ones the ones that are actually configured here that should work. We have three, that's five. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the rest of them up. This is gonna get us a pretty significant power. Like uh, once we get this upgraded and such, like we're gonna have some pretty decent power. Where is my transmitters not in range? What does it mean? <laughs> oh, we have no power. Um, I was trying to figure out what I could do for, for blocks. <laughs> And I'm out of power. Okay. Uh, we'll just use this tree. <laughs> I'm like, what am I going to do for power here? Because this is our power. This right here is all of our power. All right. So um, now I'm going to run my universal cables down here. Oh, wait. We're missing one more dynamo. There we go. Cables should be able to run. Not down there. <laughs> should be able to run right down the center. Hopefully I have enough. Yes, I have just enough. And then right there in the middle will be the plug. And then I'll select main. Okay, we should be good. Now all we need to do is place our cobble gins. One here and one here. And this fits perfectly. Item pipe it up. We're going to get our wrench here in a minute. But yeah, this should, uh, this should be able to supply it with cobblestone. No problem. It does look like our wrench is going to be an issue. Uh, you know what I should be able to do? By the way, if I go back, yeah, it's going to throw me in here. Just kind of weird. Break this cable. This is why you set that spawn point like I mentioned earlier. Otherwise, this will happen. Uh, so set that spawn point. There we go. That will fix that. I think if I just take some cobble and I manually throw it in here. 
Can I not pull out of this? I thought that actually generated cobblestone. Oh boy. Trying to think, like, how do I get the power to this system to jumpstart it? Because I don't think I have any cobble just laying around. I guess we could use... You know what? We could go in here. There's definitely cobble in here. Okay. Yeah, let's go in here. Uh, gravel, cobble, cobble. Perfect. <laughs> All that troubleshooting. Oh my goodness. Okay. We'll fill this up, get a little bit of power going. Just enough maybe for me to be able to... Oh wait, I can't get... Technically can't get power going because I forgot my wrench. How do I not have that on me? Like, what is... How, how expensive is this wrench? I've got to know this. It's literally flint and sticks. I have sticks, and we're about to have some flint. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do not make the mistake I just made. There we go. Okay. This should be simple. <laughs> I say that, and it's just like... Okay. Stick. Wrench. Perfect. Okay. Now... We should be good. Okay, let's go ahead and get this configured. There we go. And as soon as we have this configured, we're going to have a good amount of power. It's just having all of this unconfigured. That was the problem. So there we go. Now we'll jump start this bad boy. Perfect. And yeah, now we should start seeing some nice power transfer. It looks like an input of 1.5 thousand RF per tick. And of course, that is going to be a lot more once we get uh, the augments inside this bad this bad boy. Yeah, as of right now, some of these have the uh, reinforced, but that's barely touching the surface of these magmatic dynamos. Those of you who have stuck to the end of this video, I I want to have a little bit of a a bonus for you guys. And um, well, we're gonna get into something that is completely separate from what we've been doing this whole time. And I'm not even gonna mention it at the beginning of the video. And that is an easy way to get eggs, right? Um, so mob eggs, for example, these right here, they would be pretty difficult to come by, um, by, by just looking at this, right? The, the fragments, like you can, I guess, use these fragments once you get all of these items to be able to make an egg, but I'm going to show you an easier way. If you already had the mob spawned in the first place, use this mod which is mob grinding utils. It doesn't even make this very clear, right? You have to go on the wiki to know this. I know this because I did it in Sky Factory 4, but we can make a thing called a mob swab. I know, how, uh, how interesting of the name. Let's also grab a bucket and a seed. And uh, <laughs> we're gonna get ourselves a mob spawn egg. Um, I do, however, need to turn this off. Now, what mob would I want an egg of? Hmm. That's the, that's the thing. That's the question. What mob would I want an egg of? We're, we're getting unlimited ender pearls. We have, we have just about everything we could want. Hmm. I think I'm just going to pick one just for demonstration purposes. Okay. So, um, I would say creepers are good, but... Bones are pretty nice as well. Let's go ahead and swab this skeleton if I can reach in here. Maybe right here would work. There we go. So I swabbed the skeleton. You can see right here we have some mob DNA. Um, let's grab some dark glass to fill that back in, by the way. I do want to get my mob spawner back up and running. So let's hook this back up. There we go. Perfect. Turn everything back on so we don't have any clogging issues. <laughs> like hundreds of mobs that just spawned in. Okay, and let's let's get this to work. So all I need to do is grab a bucket of this experience, swab a mob with that DNA, that dino DNA, um, and we should be able to put the swab in here with a bucket of experience and a wheat seed and get ourselves some GM chicken feed. Single use for the chicken contains Minecraft skeleton DNA. Okay, so, well, it's it's chicken feed, so we have to feed it to a chicken. 
Let's go ahead and grab a chicken. And get ready for this. We're going to feed it. Happy birthday, Taco! <laughs> oh, it's too good. It's too good. And what do we get in return? Some feathers after the chicken explodes. <laughs> and we now have ourselves a skeleton spawn egg. So I, I wanted to show that to you. I'm probably going to use it later on for something. Whenever we need a mob, um, a mob egg of a certain kind. Of course, like if we want to farm a bunch of gold, which we already get tons of gold, but like if we wanted to farm any type of mob, that is another way that uh, is kind of hilarious and has a nod to Darkosto. Um, <laughs> I still love that uh, that meme. Uh, by the way, it's always if you don't know who Darkosto is, he streams over on Twitch. Um, currently, uh, at the time of me recording this, he's actually been working on Sky Factory uh, one remake, which is pretty interesting. Um, and yeah, it's always his birthday. So when you go over there, be sure to let him know and uh, let him know that Chosen sent sent you uh, and let him know happy birthday because as you just heard, it's always his birthday. So guys, with that, I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And of course, that is going to go to David White. Thank you so much for your amazing patronage over on Patreon. Of course, guys, if you want to become a beautiful Patreon, just like David, then uh, be sure to check out the link down in the description below. Also, don't forget World 10 download or, or episode 10 of the world uh, is available for download if you are a Patreon of any tier. So be sure to check that out. It's also linked down in the description below. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy and Also click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Guys, I will see your beautiful faces in the next episode. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.